Hey, this is Lance from Langchain. Today we're releasing Long-Term Memory, and this is a template you can use to get started very quickly. The motivation for this is, sometimes it's very nice when AI applications can actually remember something about you as the user, and it can be surfaced in future interactions with that AI application. So let's see this in practice. So I chat with the app, it responds, and it tells me that it's actually writing a memory about some of the personal information I provided, in particular where I live, where I like to bike, Let's keep interacting with it. So I continue to interact with it, and it continues to write memories about things that I tell it. Now let's open up a new session with this application. And in this new session, I ask a question about recommendations for bakeries after I go biking. And it responds with some locations that are basically NSF, near the Presidio where I told it I like to go biking, and good bakeries that offer very good croissants. So you can see that this application has remembered things about me from the prior session, and surfaces answers to me that are conditioned based upon those memories. So let's talk about this in a little bit more detail. For a full conceptual overview of long-term memory, you should see Harrison's video, which presents two different ways of doing memory updates. One we call in the hot path, the other we call in the background. Now we saw with this chatbot, it was telling us during chat sessions with the user, hey, I'm updating memory. This is what we call in the hot path style of memory updating. So it was telling us, hey, I'm updating my memory, and then it responds. So the nice things about this are, it's transparent to the user, so I know that A, the app is remembering things about me, and it's also in real time. So those memories are being written to somewhere, and they're available then immediately when I start that new session. Now the con is that we saw it actually you know, took time, or we had to wait for the memory to be written before the chatbot responded. So that's really the, the main drawback with this type of approach of in the hot path style of memory updating. The other consideration is how are memories actually logged or written? In this case, we're actually writing memories as a list. So we're taking that conversation with the user, we're taking an existing memories, and we're using LLM to actually process them and create a new list. So that's really what's happening under the hood in terms of how memories are being stored. Now let's walk through the code a little bit. So we saw that there were two nodes in our graph. One was call model, one was store memory. So let's actually talk about these a little bit. So I'm in the repo, I open up graph.py, and I can go to that call model node. So you can see this passes in this store object. So the store is something that we're shipping now as part of the LangGraph API. So it's accessible and free to use if you're using LangGraph Studio or LangGraph Cloud. And it gives you a very simple store abstraction that you can use to log, for example, memories. So entries or memories are namespaced in the store with a tuple. In this particular case, the tuple we're using is memories comma user ID. And so that's how it's able to access and store memories for my particular user ID in the chat session. We can see to access memories in the call model method, all we're doing is just running store.search. This retrieves all memories, namespace to memories, user ID. And we're actually just adding those to the prompt. That's why the model is able to respond using information that's saved previously, because we access memories that we've stored and we will go ahead and add those to the prompt and the model uses those when it's responding to me. Now the other thing you'll see is we're taking our LM, we're actually binding a tool to it called upsert memory. This is what's actually allowing the chat pot to save new memories. So again, we're able to access memories from this store right here with search, but we also need the ability to write memories. And that's what this tool is allowing us to do. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So we just coupled our call model node. Let's talk a little bit about the store memory node in our graph. So you can see store memory just simply looks to see, hey, did the model make a tool call using this upsert memory tool? And if it did, that means that, hey, it wants to save a memory. So we get the tool call and we basically just call the upsert memory tool with the arguments of the tool call. We then respond with a tool message identifying that the tool call is performed and we've saved a memory. So we've talked a little bit about call model. That's basically searching our store for any existing memories, adding those to the prompt, responding, and in the response, it can decide to call a tool. If it does, we go to that store memory node and we call that upsert memory tool with the arguments from the tool call passed by the model. Now let's actually talk about that upsert memory tool itself and what's going on under the hood there. So if we go over to our code, 
look at this tools.py. This is where upsert memory is defined. So it's pretty cool here, as you can see, context and content is the schema for our memories. And that's all provided here in the doc string as well. So you can see content is the content of the memory. Context is additional context about the memory. So you can think about that as metadata for the memory. And just like before, we pass in our store. And here, instead of search to get memories, we want to write memories. And simply, we call store.put. Now remember, memories were namespaced to a tuple, memories, user ID. We use that same tuple here. Now the other interesting thing is when you're writing memories, you need to provide a key and value. So the key in this case is just an ID. So it's either a random UID or it is memory ID. So the model in the tool call itself can provide an ID if it's updating an existing memory. So the tool call may include the ID but it may not. And if it doesn't, we just define a new UUID here. And the value is just a dict. And the dict is just simply content and context, which we saw previously. This is the scheme of our memories. And that's what we're writing to our store when we save new memories that are namespace to this tuple of memories user ID. So we've walked through the code. We've seen the call model node. We'll fetch memories from the store, add them to our prompt, respond to the user, and potentially make a tool call. If a tool call is made, store memory will then call the upstart memory tool to actually write that memory to our store. And we saw the upstart memory tool call itself basically just calls put to add the memory to our store. Now let's see a few more features in LangGraph Studio. So I'm back in Studio. Here is the model response. There's two different things to call out. We mentioned that we're writing memories to our store and we're also fetching memories for our store, for example, to condition the response here. So this memory tab in Studio is actually a very easy way to gain access to those memories. This is my default user ID. And we can see right here, these are the memories of the model saved in the initial interaction. So it's saved where I live, what I like to do in the mornings, again, using that schema of content and context that we talked about in the tool definition. Here is that second memory. We can see, as mentioned before, the memory is being saved as a list. Each element in the list has this content and context schema. Memories are namespaced, again, to that tuple of memories. Default is the default username that the application will use. Let's show explicitly how those memories are actually populating the prompt. So I can go down to, this is the call model node that ran, in response to my question. Go down here to Langsmith and say, open run in Langsmith. I open this up. Here's our agent. This is the node that ran call model. This is the model invocation. So we can see there's one tool bound, upsert memory. In this case, it was responding to a question, so it didn't choose to call the tool. But what's very nice is you can see this is the system prompt, and the memories are actually populated right here. This is why it's able to condition its response based upon prior information I gave it, because the memories are actually inserted in the system prompt right here. So this gave it information about where I live, what I like to do, and it finally responded with a nice set of recommendations for bakeries that I should go check out. So to summarize what we just showed here, this pattern of in the hot path style of memory updating is really convenient. It's simple to design. We saw we're basically binding a tool to our agent that is up to upsert memory. And in the context of conversation, the memory simply responds to the user, hey, I'm updating my memory right now. It's transparent, which has some real benefits. And it's really good if you want those memories to be immediately accessible. Like for example, it just writes the memories in line with the chat session. I create a new chat session and those memories are immediately accessible. Now, We'll talk about in a future video, there's other patterns to think about. If your agent has many complicated tools, for example, or if latency is really important, you don't want to burden the user with this process of memory writing, there's other design patterns we'll talk about in the future. But for now, this is a really nice way to get started, and hopefully this template can jumpstart you in thinking about memory. Please leave any questions below. Thanks.